جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا إن شاء الله تعالى in this episode I want to discuss and critique the two most prominent views that I mentioned. So let me start with the first view, which was that the Ahruf uh, al-Sab'a refers to, and it means Sab'a lughat min lughat al-Arab al-Fusha. That it refers to seven dialects of the Arabs. Seven um, prevalent dialects of the Arabs in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This view is strong, but there are things that weaken it. It's a strong opinion, but there are points that work against it. That uh, weaken it, push it down, and there are the following reasons. These are not the only reasons, but I'm just going to mention some. Number one, the fact that they disputed one another and disagreed amongst themselves which of those dialects are they? وَلِذَلِكَ بِنُ الْجَوْزِيُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said وَالَّذِي نَرَاهُ أَنَّ التَّعْيِينَ مِنَ اللُّغَاتِ عَلَى شَيْءٍ بِعَيْنِهِ لَا يَصِحُّ لَنَا سَنَدُهُ وَلَا يَثْبُتُ عِنْدَ جَهَابِذَةِ النَّقْلِ طَرِيقُهُ Ibn al-Jawzi رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said وَالَّذِي نَرَاهُ That which we see To specify a dialect And to say this is the particular dialect that the Quran came down on يعني These are the seven to say that we have no authentic evidences for it. I mean, there's no hadith for it. There's no ather from the Sahabas for this. And none of the A'imatul Hadith and the scholars of Hadith um, have authenticated any narration that states that these are the seven dialects. So number one, they don't have no evidence to say that these are the seven. Also, which seven from the Arab dialects is it? It's again, uh, they don't know why they chose these seven and not these seven. The second reason, or the second point, is if you look at the qira'at that we have today, that we recite the Quran in, you find that it consists of more than the seven dialects that they mentioned. And we have uh, words are in, in the Quran that are dialects other than the seven dialects they all mention. For example, the word Samidun. Samidun. The word uh, Samada, it means Ghanna, to sing. And this is Lugha to Himyar. It's the dialect of the people of Himyar, which is not stated in the seven each party is bringing forward. The word Rafath, the word Rafath, it means jima', sexual intercourse. Again, this is the law of Mudhij. Again, it's not in the seven that, that they stated. It's not in the seven that they stated. So, that shows that the seven dialect argument is not strong, it's not powerful. Number three, that which has been narrated from Umar ibn al-Khattab, when Umar radiallahu anhu was speaking to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Umar radiallahu anhu said to him, in al-Qur'an unzila bilughati Quraysh, that the Qur'an has been sent down in the dialect of Quraysh. فَأَقْرِ إِنَّاسَ بِلُغَةِ Quraysh. Read the, the, the Qur'an to the people in the language of Quraysh. وَلَا تُقْرِئْهُمْ بِلُغَةِ هُذَيْلِ Do not read the Qur'an to them in the dialect of Hudayl. Now this again shows you that the Qur'an has been sent down in this dialect. Umar رضي الله عنه saying it. أُنزِلَ بِلُغَةِ قُرَيْشِ There's another hadith an Imam al-Bukhari narrated that Uthman ibn Affan said to the scribes that were, that were writing, he said to them, إِذَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ وَزَيْدُ بْنُ ثَابِتٍ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ if you guys and Zayd ibn Thabit dispute 
regarding anything related to the Quran. Write it in the dialect of Quraysh. Because it came down in their dialect. So that shows the argument that says it came down Unzil al-Qur'an ala sab'ati ahrufin that the Qur'an was sent down in seven dialects and those dialects each refer to a uh, the, the dialects of the Arab uh, of that time is weak because Uthman and Umar are both saying that it came down in the dialect of Quraysh the fourth uh, point that debunks uh, this claim that it's sent, but sent down in these seven dialects is Umar and Hisham ibn Hakim who are both Qurashiyan Umar is a Qurashi man and Hisham ibn Hakim is a Qurashi man and both of them disputed in the recitation a verse in Surah Al-Furqan both of them are Qurashiyan yani both of them are for Quraysh if it was an issue of dialects they would not have disputed one another, another, one another. Then Umar would read in the dialect of Quraysh and Isham ibn Hakim is reading in the dialect of Quraysh. But they're differing amongst themselves. And they're claiming the reason why there is a difference is because there's different dialects and the Quran was sent down in different dialects. But here we have two Qurayshiyan, two Quraysh men having a what? Having a khilaf, a dispute, dispute amongst themselves, both of whom are reading in the Qurayshi dialect. Now we're going to go into the second opinion, the second st strongest opinion out there when it comes to al al Sab'ah. The second most prominent opinion out there regarding al al Sab'ah. And this view, as you all know, is the view that says the al al Sab'ah is referring to seven variations uh, of reciting the Qur'an. Um, and I mentioned Ibn Qutaybah held that view, Abu al-Fadl al-Razi um, and also Ibn al-Jazali rahimahullah. And we discussed, we discussed it in our previous episode. This opinion is uh, weak for many reasons, I'm only going to mention two. Number one is that they amongst themselves disputed and argued what seven different variations are we referring to. Because there are 20 different variations in the Qur'an. Why did you select these seven? And if you look at amongst themselves, Abu Fadl al-Razi has seven different variations that he's referring to. Here you have Ibn Qutayba mentioning seven different. Uh, you have Ibn al-Jazari, he has seven different. This shows you the fact they couldn't agree on it makes the argument uh, a bit weak. Number two, the second reason why this opinion seems also weak uh, is because the wisdom in why the Ahruf as Sab'a came down is to make matters easy for the elderly person, the illiterate person who can't read or write. And that was the purpose it came down. If you look at the seven that Ibn al-Jazari mentioned, Abu Fadl al-Razi mentioned, Ibn Qutayba mentioned, you see that it doesn't fulfill that objective. Rather, if you look deep at it, you tend to find that they are more referring to the writing rather than the pronunciation and the articulation and the recitation. When in reality, if you look at the riwayat concerning the Ahruf al Sab'a, it's talking about the recitation. So for example, when they mention the issue of the tasrif al-af'al, past, present, and verb, taqdeem and ta'khir, uh, word, word order, uh, the verbal morphology. And this is something that doesn't show the wisdom of why the Ahruf al came down. The Ahruf al came down to make matters easy. The verbal morphology doesn't seem to fulfill that goal. Or the issue of word order, for example. Okay? or the issue of uh, subtraction and omission and addition, addition in some places. That, that doesn't seem to be the case. The problem that 
was there and that Ahruf is Sab'a is trying to fulfill is people are struggling to pronounce particular words, to say those words properly. That's what they're struggling with. And so the Quran came down in those seven uh, Ahruf in order to make matters easy for the people. Those two opinions are the two strongest opinions. And without a shadow of a doubt, they have element of truth present in both of them. But as a whole, يعني, the seven dialects of the Arabs, as a whole, the whole entire argument doesn't all seem right. There is right and wrong within the argument. And also, the view that says it's seven different variations that Ibn Jazari, Ibn Qutayba, and Abu Fadl al-Razi chose, um, also has element of truth in it. And there's also in there things that are incorrect. Evidence doesn't back it up. It's like contradiction and etc. So now it moves me to what is the strongest opinion. But before I go into what is the strongest opinion, I want to ask a question and also answer that question. The hadith related to the seven ahruf has reached multitude narration. He has reached multitude narration. Why has not there come one narration that has inside it the meaning of Al-Ahruf al-Sab'ah? And when we know the qa'idah that the scholars mentioned, تأخير البيان في وقت الحاجة لا يجوز في حقه صلى الله عليه وسلم To delay something that is needed. When it's needed, is not something that we can say that the Prophet ﷺ will do. And it's haram for us to say that the Messenger ﷺ is going to delay something when the need is outstanding and the people are in need of it. And he will not clarify it. لا يجوز في حقه تأخير البيان عن وقت الحاجة Nabi Allah Muhammad will never delay something that the people need at the time they need it. So, al al Sab'ah. The response to this question is that there were one of two reasons why the narrations didn't state this and didn't mention this. The first one is لِوُضُوحِ الْمُرَادِ مِنَ الْأَحْرُفِ عِنْدَهُمْ Sahaba to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they understood what the Prophet meant by it. It was ma'loom. They knew it out of necessity. So it wasn't something they needed to ask him, what do you mean by this, O Messenger of Allah? And the Sahabas used to do that a lot. If there was a matter they didn't understand, they would say, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean by this? And the Prophet would clarify it for them. Plus the Sahabas are very knowledgeable people, they're not like us. The Sahaba are more knowledgeable in the Arabic language, they are more, in, they are more knowledgeable in the Prophet's speech, alayhi salatu wasalam, yani they lived with him. They knew his character, they knew he, his method of speech, they knew what he intended from things. And Abu Bakr, for example, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, stood up and he gave his khutbah, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, said to the companions, a slave, there's a slave, Allah wa ta'ala, gave him the choice of this dunya and its glamours and its glamours and the hereafter and this slave he chose the hereafter Abu Bakr cried why did Abu Bakr cry because he knew that the Prophet was talking about himself and he knew the Prophet that well so it's not possible that the Prophet will say sallallahu alayhi wa that the Quran came down in seven ahruf and Abu Bakr would hear the Prophet say that, and Umar would hear him say that, and all the Sahabas would hear him say that. Multiple time, multiple companions would hear that from him, and not one of them would say, Oh, Messenger of Allah, what do you mean by it? So that shows us that the Sahabas understood al ahruf al Sab'ah. And that's why they didn't ask for clarification, and that's why they didn't explain it in their hadith, because it's known. It's known. A second argument can be that. The reason why they didn't explain it to us, the Sahabas, or the narrations didn't mention it is because the Sahabas didn't know. And that is a very weak argument. Uh, and I've given the reason why that wouldn't make sense or that wouldn't be the, the uh, correct uh, 
uh, approach to say that the Sahabas didn't understand when they've, they're hearing it from him uh, many times. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to go into the strongest opinion regarding what is meant by Al-Ahruf al sabah The opinion that my heart settles with personally, and I found it to be very strong, uh, and it seems to be the best argument out there. And again, brothers and sisters, I want to put this out as a disclaimer and say to each and every one of you that these in opinions are again ijtihadat. They are based on independent reasoning. This opinion can be an opinion that you might find deficiencies in it. But we're only looking for which opinion is the closest to the truth or the evidence is backing up. So after looking and researching and observing that which my heart is content with, and I've read all the views out there that Suyulti and others have mentioned regarding this issue. I've read so many books on it. The view that my heart settles with and I find contentment in, in is the view that was set by uh, Dr. Abdul Aziz Al Qari. Dr. Abdul Aziz Al Qari's argument is the strongest. He argues the following. He says, the Ahruf al Sab'a, by the way, what he did was Abdul Aziz Al Qari, is that when he read all of the entire views, he weakened each view he took a view from within all of those yani whichever view had correct points in it he took it from it and whatever was wrong he left it and the next view whatever was right he took from it and whatever was wrong he abandoned it and from that he brought a view which is what i'm going to mention now so inshallah ta'ala it revolves around five points Five points it revolves around what harf is. The first he said is al-wujuh al-sab'a. Al-wujuh al-sab'a, it means seven uh, forms. And the reason why he specifically said the word al-wujuh, which is a jam of the word al-wajh, remember at the beginning we said that some said the word al-ahruf, which comes from the singular word harf, uh, has many meanings. It's a word which is mushtarak has many meanings. It, it means taraf. It also means annaqatul damira. It means annahiya, and etc. He's choosing the opinion that said that the word al-ahruf al-harf means al-wajh. So he said al-wujuh. That he's strengthening that opinion. The reason why is because bistiqra'i al-fad al-hadith. When he looked at the narrations and observed the narrations, the meaning that stands out from all of that is this concept is talking about uh, al-wujuh, forms. And that seems to be very strong. He said al-wujuh as sab'a, seven. The reason why he's saying seven is because he's trying to strengthen the opinion that the seven is literal, not metaphorical. He's trying to say that the adad here, the seven here, is ala haqiqatihi it's literal it's not metaphorical it's not a metaphor but that being said it doesn't mean that it's going to reach seven because seven is the maximum it could sometimes be the recitation can be in one word three it can mean four it can be four it can be five it can be six it can be two could be possible because the recitation of the Quran is two types. The first one is unanimously agreed upon. Yani it's, 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 it's the recitation of this is all of the Quran are the same on it. There's no difference amongst them all. And that's the majority of the Quran. And there is places where there are differences. Those differences doesn't reach more than seven. Seven is the maximum. Sometimes there can be three differences. Sometimes there's four differences. So when he says as-sab'a, it means an aqsa had the maximum amount it can be the recitation of it or the forms is that seven. For example, the word arjih we have in the Quran, arjih. Arjih has sitat awju, six forms it can be recited in, six ways that it can be recited in. 
And those six ways are mutawatira. يعني six قراءة which are mutawatira. Now, it's not seven. We have وَيَتَّقْهِ وَيَتَّقْهِ It's recited in arba'at awju, four more forms, four ways. So sometimes it can be four, sometimes it can be six, وَهَكَذَا But seven is the maximum. Point number three that the definition revolves around is He said al السَّبْعَةَ لقراءة القرآن الكريم المتغايرة. The third point is المتغايرة. متغايرة means variations. But these variations are not variations which is specific to synonyms. And some of the scholars argued, remember before, that the variations here are only synonyms. It's like هلوما وأقبل وتعال. Like هلوما. Which means come here. Waqbil, which means come here. Ta'al, which means come here. No. Some of the variations in the Quran are not just synonyms. It's actually a different word with a different meaning. So the Shaykh is trying to say Al Mutagayira here means that the ikhtilaf is not just the one type which is a taraduf, that is synonyms. That's not the only type. The mutagayira can sometimes be other than a synonym, which is strong. Point number four, he said Al-Munazzalah Qur'anan. Al-Munazzalah Qur'anan, what he's trying to say is that he's refuting those people who are saying the Rukhsa is that the Ahruf is Sab'ah when it came down. It's the Rukhsa here that's been given to the people into reading in the seven is seven in whichever way they want. The Shaykh is trying to refute that. No, the recitation is restricted by revelation. Right? The wording cannot just be recited the way you feel like or the way you want. It has to be restricted by is a revelation. يعني, as I said to you before, is talaqi and mushafaha. Yani these variations that you're seeing, all of them are from who? Allah Azza wa Jalla. They are not from the Prophet. He didn't make this. The Sahabas didn't make this. And the Qurra that you're seeing, they didn't make this. All of these variations are all taken from the Prophet ﷺ. They go back to the Prophet ﷺ. Last but not least, the fifth one is al qiraah You can recite it in whichever of those seven you want. He used the word al qiraah which is the fifth one. The fifth point is al qiraah which is the ahruf is connected to the concept of pronunciation. It's not an issue of writing and the form of a word. It's talking about the pronunciation and the articulation of the word. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, in many of the hadiths, what did he say? Aqra'ani Jibreel. Jibreel recited on me. In, in another riwayah, um, another word, he says, Wallah, it, he says, Wa inna allaha ya'muruka an taqra ummataka. Allah is commanding you to recite onto your ummah. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, in, the, in another riwayah, or another wording, he say, or another hadith, فَقْرَأُوا مِنْهَا مَا تَيَسَّرُ The word is, the issue of Al-Ahruf revolves around recitation. Okay? So this again, is, it debunks the claim of those who are more focusing on the, the form of the word and the writing of that word. The issue of uh, Al-Ahruf revolves around Al-Qira'a, pronunciation. And it was to make it easy for the elderly person and the illiterate and the young child to recite the Quran like the pure um, as it came down from Allah Azza wa Jalla. I hold that this opinion Abdul Aziz Al Qari mentioned it's very safe, very good. Um, but I do say that. To say that this is a hundred percent the strongest opinion, and there is this is it, is very hard. But this seems to be the closest to uh, the evidences uh, of the hadith. Anything I might have said that was wrong is from me, a Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing? on this YouTube channel. Simple. 
like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.